Hi, and welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. Except we're not really in the kitchen. We are out on the deck because today we're grilling. And what I'm going to be making for you today is cedar plank salmon and grilled asparagus and a rice pilaf, a special rice pilaf. And everything can be cooked here on the barbecue. It's a lot of fun to do it that way because you're here with, you know, your friends, you don't want to kind of run in the kitchen while they're out here and enjoying the outdoors on the deck. Well, today, you're our friends. So, I also got live entertainment. It's wonderful because uh, my good man, who is my partner, is here to play some music for all of you while I'm grilling and getting things ready. I'm going to start with showing you how to marinate the salmon. Important. I've got a beautiful slab of salmon. Nice fresh salmon. You'll notice when we're working outside that you have to have things on ice because you need to be food safe. The first thing you start with is wine. It doesn't look right first thing in the morning. But believe me, this one is for drinking, only for the salmon to drink. I'm going to put about a half a cup of wine on the salmon. I like using avocado oil. I need just a drizzle of avocado oil. Avocado oil does not break down into trans fats when it's brought up to high heat. So I always think it's the safest oil. bit of that. You're going to need no salt because you're going to be using a little soy. And that's salty enough. You just drizzle it on there. It gets a special flavor to it. Now I like adding a few of my extra little things like I use a little bit of a, a fig balsamic. You can get these things just about anywhere in your specialty stores, you know, just got to look around in the deli sections. I'm going to put a little bit of that on here too because it's a little bit of sweet with the salt, but it's special. It's basically, you're putting a cure on the salmon and flavor. So here's some brown sugar, about a tablespoon of brown sugar. When you're curing any kind of bacon or ham or anything, you always need a sugar and salt type cure. But instead of the salt, of course, I'm using the soy. Now, I've got some things here. A little bit of onion and garlic mixture. And I'm gonna put that on there. And now I have my, I love working with fresh herbs out of the garden. Very important to have the dill. So I'm going to put the dill, the whole stem, because I'm not cooking the stem, but this is going to savor in its juices, right? And you're going to see what I'm going to do in a minute. I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to turn it around so that it bathes in all the juices. So some of those things that I put on the top are now on the bottom, including more dill. Then I'm going to cover this up. It's sitting on ice and it has to marinate for a minimum of a half an hour. So you see, you can do it in a, very quickly. You don't have to have it. It can marinate for two hours, but you don't want to marinate it longer than that because then it will become gravlox really fast. Gravlox is delicious too, and that'll be another recipe I show you on another day. Now I'm gonna wash my hands. Being on the barbecue, you don't have everything handy, so I've got my, my sink below a little hand washing bowl. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of cracked pepper on this yet. Very important ingredients to have on here. 
and let that infuse and then in about 15 minutes I'll turn it over again. I've got to put a little foil on it. Oh, got to grab that. Never mind, I don't need foil. I'm just going to put a board because I only need, I don't want the towel to sink in to it. So I'm just going to put the towel over top like that and then I'm going to set it to the side. Now you're going to see on this side, it's very important that you soak. I've got two glasses of water, it looks like I'm thirsty, but I have pre-soaked the cedar plank because they need to be soaking for a minimum of an hour. I always say two hours, so I actually have it, had it soaking for two hours, so it's going to be ready for when we need to do that. But I wanted you to see that. So I'm going to take this large pitcher of water and just set it in there to make sure it's really soaking before we put the cedar plank on the barbecue. That's the beginning of that one. So now we have to leave that for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to dice up some small asparagus stems. This is things that I'm going to put into the rice pilaf. So I have to do that kind of thing while I'm getting ready. So you just make small dices like this because it's going to put color into the rice. Now I've got a burner on the outside here. It's going to need also about 20 minutes to cook, so I don't have to put it on just yet. So I'm doing all of the pre-prep. What do they call that? Mise en place. <laughs> what you're saying? Mise en place. That's the French term. We will just call it pre-prep. Seeing as we're grilling. Does anybody know the difference between grilling and barbecuing? Me neither. I think grilling is just the fancy word for it. So I'm just peeling up a couple of carrots because I'm going to want to dice these really fine because when I put them into the rice, it'll be only in the last five minutes to make sure that they're cooked. But you don't want them smooshy or bleeding color into the rice. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to show you a trick about how to save your asparagus because I'm going to make a grilled asparagus. And a lot of people just get rid of the ends, but that's not the way to go. You can just peel them down, so I'm going to show you that in a minute, as soon as I finish these little carrots. So, you just make really thin cuts on the carrot like that. You need a sharp knife, and you need to keep your fingers out of the way. If you notice the way I'm using my hand like this, you always put your knuckles against the knife. There you go, just like that. And then really tiny pieces, because this is like basically a garnish inside of the rice. You can use also uh, frozen peas when you're doing it. But I'm using what I have in the fridge, and that's something you should do. You don't have to just run off and get groceries. You just look in your fridge and say, hmm, how can I make this a colorful dish? Well, carrots, onions, asparagus, peas, all that is very good. So I'm just going to put those two together because they'll cook really fast when we put them into the rice. I'm just going to put these skins off to the side and finish the other one too. I'm going to ask Jack to play another tune while I'm chopping and dicing and slicing. Mr. Jack Hollenberg, these are songs that he has composed. The first one was was called Radiance. And um, what are you playing now? Okay, he didn't write this one. He just wished he had a. <laughs> We've been working together with music for a long, long time. And yeah, and I'm going to sing something as soon as I got some, everything ready to go and I have a moment. Because after all, I am the singing cook or chef or cook with a K. We aren't sure. Right now, let's listen to Jack while I chop and dice. And I'll still keep talking all over top of him, which is, you know, what I do. I mean, 
what are we married for 30 some years <laughs> we talk over top of each other all the time just a little bit more carrot here it's fine work <laughs> I like working to music. Most of the time I've got something rocking in the kitchen when I'm working. I don't know. Music is beautiful. It's a language of its own. Can you imagine a world without music in it? I can't imagine a world without music in it. It's a universal language. We've played in Costa Rica and Colombia and where? Chile? We couldn't speak Spanish. In fact, it was fairly funny. But it didn't matter. A little sign language and a little music and everybody understood each other perfectly. It was wonderful. Okay, so the pre-prep on the vegetables are there. If you see me flailing and swatting, it's just because we have mosquitoes visiting and they were not invited. <laughs> just gonna move just to the side over here. Now, the rice. It's nice to have a garden. I can just fling the things out there and it'll make things grow. <laughs> gonna have two cups of water. Two cups of water. One mosquito. <laughs> and I'm using a batsami rice, one cup, and a half a cup of local grown, actually from Kamsak, quinoa. Makes a beautiful color. The two cook at the same temperature and the same time, so that's going to be easy. But here's, a, here's the trick to make the flavors. I've got some turmeric. I'm going to put some turmeric in there because you want to have it. That gives it a flavor. Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. I'm going to put a little bit of turmeric in here. It doesn't want to come out. It's stubborn. It's going to put a beautiful yellow flavor, to uh, a color to the dish. It's also got a beautiful flavor. And then I've got some cardamom seeds. Cardamom is uh, used a lot in Indian food, but it's also used in Indonesian food. Uh, it's also used in Canadian food, obviously, because I'm using it. It's got a nice, almost minty, cinnamony type flavor, and I really like that. So we put that in there, everything goes in. My grandchildren are funny. Whenever they come and they smell that I'm cooking that, they say it smells like Fruit Loops. Never got that quite, but it's fun. Okay, now I'm gonna put this on because it doesn't hurt to have that one ready ahead of time. So lucky, it just starts like that. I'm gonna just squiggle that around a little. Don't put salt in it or anything because you can always add your seasonings later. I'm just going to put the lid on crooked because I need to watch for when it comes to boil. So this is for later. That's that, that's that, that's that. Now, the salmon is marinating. I just have to pre-prepare some asparagus. Yeah, it's here. Asparagus. Jack, can I send you on a little errand up in the spice cupboard? He's my trusty assistant and guitar player. You'll see the, the roasted garlic. Can you get that? And I need a little bowl, a stainless steel bowl, so that I can put all the peelings from the vegetables in there. Please and thank you. <laughs> my trusty runner. See, when we were working in the kitchen, I could just go into the pantry. <clears throat> but now I'd just be going into the bedroom, so that just would be weird. Here's what I wanted to show you about the asparagus. Now you're serving quite a few people, so it's important to have enough asparagus, and you should always have a lot of vegetables on your plate. Now I'm gonna have some vegetables, of course, in the rice too. Now you're just gonna take, kind of even off, even the, I should turn it around so you can see better. <coughs> you see it's uneven a bit. Some of the points, I don't want to lose any of the points, and I only want to lose the very end here, like this. Like that. 
Now in order not to lose all of your asparagus, you just take about an inch off. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. You're my pantry runner and your guitar and the guitar player. There you go. A man of many duties. <coughs> Instead of just breaking it off about here, you're going to lose all this. It's a nice presentation too, so you just take about two inches down, like that, like that, like that. And when that cooks, you're going to see that looks really nice. Look. And when it cooks, this gets brighter, and then that stays lighter. So. I want to do that. Barbecue season. Everybody just goes crazy for grilling and barbecuing because here in Canada our season is unbelievably short. So it's really fun to know a lot of different things you can do and that don't take you know a whole bunch of time. Like right now I'm quickly doing up these. The salmon is marinating There'll be time to sit down and have a, a drink with your friends in between it all. Because these only take about two minutes, or I would say maybe, maybe three or four minutes on the grill to cook. So you don't have to worry too much about what's going on. You just got to watch that nothing's burning. Kind of important. So I'm taking some of the bigger ones because they've got the fatter bottoms, right? Like that. Jack, you got another song up your sleeve? And as soon as I'm done grilling here and everything's ready to go and the salmon's ready to go on to the barbecue, I'm going to come over there and sing a song too. What's it called? <laughs> the story behind this song. We were kids. My dad always watched this farm report, and we all had to sit at the table and be quiet while this farm report was on. It drove us crazy. And this song was kind of in the beginning of that farm report. So one day Jack was just fooling around in the in the studio and he was talking about, oh yeah, I really like this song. And so I said, why are you playing that song? Do you even know what it is? Like, he says, well, yeah, I know what it is. I never knew what it was called. All I knew is as kids, we had to really be quiet while that song was playing, so a little history. The Farm Report. <laughs> See, it's fun, you kind of move to the groove. Try not to cut your fingers while you do it. It's kind of cool not to do that. This is by far the hardest part of making this whole meal. And if you don't have time to peel these and you don't want to be bothered or, you know, you just cut them off and then you can grill them too. But I'm a little stickler on presentation. I'll show you what we do with that after, before they're grilled. But I need enough of them. Because I've got some hungry cameramen here too, they're gonna have to eat something. I should have mentioned, you're tuning in right now to Access. And that's who's doing all the filming. It's wonderful to for them to come out and do this. And deal with the singing kook. making quite a mess. It's a beautiful summer day. I can't think of a better day for barbecuing. Oh, grilling. You tell me at the end of the show, what do you call it? Grilling or barbecuing? I gotta go check my rice. Yeah. I'll put the breathing holes there. Still not coming to boil, but it will. Oh, 
Thank you, Jack. That was awesome. It's a dying thing, the live entertainment. So when we have friends visiting and we're making up a barbecue and doing what we do, we're lucky because we can do the live entertainment, although sometimes I'm a little crazy shifting hats. But it brings me back to when we were in Alberta. I, was, I had my catering company there. It was a crazy time because we used to cook for about 200 to 400 people, I guess. And so you'd cook all day and sing all night. That's what we did. And we'd dan they would dance. And, and then people would argue all the time. Was that our chef? No. And it was really fun. It was really fun to watch that craziness go on. That's enough asparagus. So I'm going to put that under the towel as well because we are outside. And this is sort of my little refrigerator because the ice is underneath there. Clean up behind myself for a minute. And... Just got to wait for the rice to come to boil, and then I'll turn it down. The salmon is ready to go, the board is ready to go, the asparagus is ready to go. I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> I think I'm going to go sing a song for you. Just going to turn down the, turn down the rice. Yeah. A bit of a flame, a bit of a wind blowing. I'm going to leave my apron on because it's going to be too much of a mess to try to take it off and on. Besides, I am the singing kook. Right. Jack, have you got a microphone for me? This is a song that was on our um, a Winds of Change album, and I'll show you the pictures of the album after a little while. I should have them handy here. And it's kind of fun, because I sort of have to be here to watch things, but I can sing at the same time. Uh, one time on our anniversary, I just said, okay, I'm going to write this song. Uh, it, it was about keeping the romance alive, because that's what it takes sometimes, you know, after a couple of months of being together and, you know, the edge wears off, so to speak. That's when you have to do a work on a relationship. And so that's what we did. Jack, are you ready over there? <laughs> Uh-oh, I better stir up the gravy or do something. <laughs> I can check on things.
run. Woohoo! I see things are boiling. Made that just in time. Okay, I'm gonna get the salmon ready to go on. I turned the I turned the barbecue on already, mm -hmm. so it's preheating. And I had to quickly get over. I, here I am singing and doing crazy things and letting things boil all over the place. That happens. This is what happens when you can't keep the romance alive. You spice people's life up a little bit, right? Like that. <laughs> do I ever have to do that, Jack? Once in a while. <laughs> I'm gonna move the asparagus to the side. And the cutting board, don't need that one right now. But I do need to just flip this over again, just to make sure it's got a good bath, right? Nice and cold, exactly the way I wanted it. And here's the cedar boards. Now, you can get these cedar boards. This, this is an official cooking cedar board. But if you want, and you can't find that anywhere, you can go to your local lumber supply place and make sure you get untreated cedar because <laughs> it's kind of important. So you see, I'm going to take this salmon now, and I'm going to lay it beautifully. It fits perfect on there. Wow, I didn't even pre-plan that. And the board is nice and wet, so I'm going to put it. Mm, it's not quite ready. I'm going to leave it here just until the barbecue has come to heat. And I'm going to put it on high heat for, I don't know, I would say about five minutes so that it really starts to smolder. And then you got to turn it down. I never finished telling you this is a maple glazed cedar plank salmon. We're going to be finishing it with maple syrup. But I took the dill now that it was savoring in off, but I'm going to put a little bit of dried dill on it. It just seems to need that extra, so, and, it, and it looks pretty too. So you just do a little thing like that. And I'm gonna put a little extra cracked pepper on too because, because it's on a cedar plank, it never gets dry because it doesn't cook from the bottom, so to speak. It cooks from the top and, and bakes all around. It gets really nice. I'm gonna put a little more cracked pepper because it won't burn the pepper. If, you, if you're sauteing or doing something like that, you never put the pepper because you're gonna burn it and it's going to be... <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of pictures of me trying to catch mosquitoes. No, I'm not cooking them. Okay, on to the barbecue. Yeah, it's ready. So putting it down here, right in the center. I'm going to let it smolder away. Now I'm going to remove a few things in, that are in the way here. Take them around the corner to the pantry. <laughs> right. Don't need the refrigerator anymore either. Can move it out to the pantry. Jack, should we do one of the songs off of our new album? I've got time while this is going. But I think I'm going to come over by you. Because there's nothing I can do while this is getting started. Which one do you want? Hard work and hands. That's a darn good idea. I'm going to sit down on the job while I'm hard work and hands. It's, this is a brand new album. Yes, and that song is actually getting a lot of attention. So I'd like to be able to sing that one while everything is starting to grill over there. She's a hard working woman. Works like men. Still cleans up like a lady with hard working hands. She's nobody's baby, but if she's looking. 
Okay, I gotta get back to the, I smell cedar burning, which is good. You want cedar burning. But I've gotta check the rice, that's most important right now. Because the cardamom seeds that I put in there, I need a pot holder. I'm not gonna let you look in there yet. It's just starting to smell nice. I've got these cardamom seeds on the top, and they're gonna have to come out when this is ready, because I have to add the vegetables that I cut up to go in there yet, these. But I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. Start to look really nice, look. It's just the beginning phases. It's just starting to get there, it's starting to smoke. But I gotta leave it closed, because I want it to be on high heat to make sure you get that smoldering, because if you don't get that, you don't get the flavors. I need this because I'm going to be basting with uh, pretty soon. To caramelize, the only way it's going to caramelize is with the syrup on there. This, by the way, we don't have a lot of real Canadian recipes. Did you know that? But this one is one of the most Canadian recipes there is. I believe it came from our First Nations way back. I mean, they knew about this way before us. We discovered it in a late date, that's for sure. I'm going to now, while I'm waiting for that to go, I'm going to prepare my asparagus. It's so simple. It's so simple. You just put, again, I really like working with the, the avocado oil because I'm, I'm into healthy. By the way, this is an extremely healthy meal. People don't realize that with good cooking and fancy cooking, so to speak, this isn't even fancy, but they, some people consider it fancy. It can be extremely healthy. 
And you should look toward that and say, okay, how can I make a really nice meal without it being all really a lot of fat in it? So I drizzle it with that. I'm going to use a little bit of this garlic powder that Jack brought out. I, I use real garlic a lot, but this one is um, a roasted garlic already. I like it. And you just sprinkle that on there. Just a wonderful flavor. And I'm going to use a little bit of Herbes de Provence. Herbes de Provence is a fancy name for a mixture of your favorite herbs. I grow a lot of my own, so I grind them up and put them into jars too for my own use. This has got lavender and thyme and sage and a little bit of rosemary in it, so that's the combination. Now I'm going to need a little bit of pepper on there as well. And this time I do need a little bit of salt. If you're going to use salt though, make it good salt. And that's a sea salt. Not much. So people can add their own salt. So what I'm going to do is just toss these around to make sure everything is nicely oiled up like that and ready to go. So that would be the next thing I do. Got to wash my hands in my dish pan down here. Not going to find me way down there, I'm afraid. Jack, can you play another tune while we're, while I'm messing around here? Thanks. Now, what I was talking about before, I'm going to do. I think the rice is ready enough that I can take the cardamom seeds off. You don't want, they're for flavor. So, you see, they, they come to the top when you're cooking. And you're going to scoop them out of there. A little bit of the rice might come with it, it doesn't matter. Can you smell that cedar? Woohoo! That's a wonderful smell. That's awesome too for your guests when they're sitting on the deck and they make the meal here. There, I've got them out. Now I'm going to stir it up a little. Still needs a little more cooking, which is perfect, because I'm going to throw the vegetables in there. The vegetables that I prepared earlier, because they got to have a chance to steam. So you can see how colorful that's going to be. It's just beautiful and healthy. So I'm just going to mix it all in and let it steam in. Simple as that. Set that to the side. Yeah. Uh, put the lid back on. While Jack plays another tune. By this time the guests will be dancing all around the deck and you have to kind of keep them away from the fire. I'm going to give you another peek at the salmon. See now it's flaming. So now I'm turning it down. Because now I want it to smoke. And I'm just going to dump out the fire a little bit. I've got, I've got some um, water here just for that. Because I want it to smoke, I don't want it to burn. When you're barbecuing, you might see that I've always got some a uh, little bit of water around. I've got something to drink, but that's beside the point. I have something just in case you do have to put out a fire. Look at this. Simple as that. Stir on the edges, and you want it to smoke, so it's perfect. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. <laughs> Don't freak out if that happens. It's okay. If you get a little on the fish, that's okay too. See? Now it's going to smoke beautifully. Let it smoke. I love the smell. Now I'm going to get the basket ready. If you don't have something like this, you could just use foil. I've got this, I love it. But you can just perforate a piece of foil and make that work too. I'm just going to get this ready to go. Now 
nice peppy tune. I enjoyed that. Thanks. Now, as soon as the rice is finished, and as soon as the salmon is finished, I'm going to do a flambéed dessert. Sounds crazy. What? Flambéed? Well, I got a burner right here. And I want to prove that I'm not, I don't have the rum here for me. <laughs> I've got the brown sugar too. I'm just going to move a few things to the side. So the first thing I do is I get a fry pan, like a, a skillet of some sort. And I have one over here that I use particularly for this. First thing you put in it is butter. Butter. Give it a spoon here. I want to get it pre-prepared because as soon as the meal is finished, you're going to want to have the dessert ready to go. So I take about, oh, I don't know, I'd say a tablespoon of butter to put in the pan. I'm going to get the bananas ready. Take the banana open like that. So I'm just pre-preparing. And... The traditional way is to just cut them in half like that so that they're going to lay in the pan. But I'm going to have to remove this. I only got one burner just to melt the butter a little bit. And this is well on its way anyway. Okay, now, now it's time to baste. the salmon with a little bit of good old Canadian maple syrup. And you're going to do this twice, but I'm going to do it right now because I need to turn it up a hair in order to caramelize that. I'll leave this here. And I'm just melting this butter so that I can lay the bananas in there and get them ready to go. One banana, two banana, three. You got any song about bananas? <laughs> Anything tropical? No? I'm just saying, play something, Jack. Simply because I want to hear you play. And so does everybody else. Watch your fingers when you're cutting these things. A lot of people use smaller knives than me. I just, I like using the big knives. I actually prefer to cut the bananas in half. It's going to be easier to put to plate them. Ah, oh, I love that song. What's the name of the song? Bailando de Luz de la Luna. Whoa. That's a mouthful. Something about by the light of the moon. Dancing. Dancing by the light of the moon. Yeah. It's broad daylight. Oh, well, what the heck. So now I'm just going to lay the bananas in here because I'm, as soon as the rice is finished, I'm going to pre-prepare this. It'll be the finale of the meal. Set it to the side and cover it up. You need a little bit of rum because it's a flambe. So no, none for the cook. The assistant said he wants some though. <laughs> Later. On this, I should. I might as well get that ready too. You put some brown sugar. This spoon belonged to Jack's grandmother. Believe it or not. Awesome. From Holland. So now I'm just going to sprinkle up a couple spoonfuls of brown sugar. And I'm going to need a little bit of cinnamon. It's a very easy dessert. And you serve it with ice cream. There's a clincher. Get that ready to go. And I usually use also a little bit of maple syrup. I'm just going to cover this up for the moment. And I'm going to check on things over here. I'm 
gonna get this on the top burner because I want the smoky on the top shelf. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should have backed up when I opened the lid. Okay, warning, back up when you, when you open the lid. I'm just gonna put the banana peels to the side. When you put the asparagus in the way I just did it now, it won't cook fast. I'll put it down on the grill when I take the salmon off. I just gotta empty this water because I'm going to need this pan. Well, I guess I could just water the garden. Woohoo! Hey, there's a lot to be said to barbecuing. That's another song Jack wrote. It was nice. I started putting some words to it, and then I just liked it as an instrumental, so I didn't mess with it. I'm going to need this when I take the salmon off. Very nice. Thank you, dear. Now, I've got a little bit of pistachio nuts here, too. I'm just going to chop those up because I like putting those on the dessert for garnish. Again, just if you want to. You can put anything you want on it or nothing. Okay, I bet you anything that salmon is just about ready. And then when it is, I'm going to put it into the tray and then I'm going to put the asparagus down. The rice is ready, so I can shut it off. Smoke it again. Shall we have a look? Woohoo! That is looking mighty fine, and it's smoking right up onto the asparagus. So you're going to get this really nice smoky, 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 smoky flavor, which I like, on your vegetable, which makes it a real grilling. See, that's burning a little. It doesn't hurt anything. That's what's making it smoky. That'll be the last time I have to baste it. I will take a little bit more water to just kill that flame so it smokes. See? Want it to smoke. That's how you turn a grill into a smokery. So I think... What I'm going to do is just remove, whew, I'm getting smoked out, remove this from the heat and put it over on a pot holder because it needs to be on something so it doesn't burn. I want to show you what this looks like. When you're plating it on a plate, for example, I have to have a clean plate. I'm going to take a little ring like this. It's good to have a little butter in it because it won't stick. You put a little butter on it. It's a, it's a great presentation when you do it this way. See, look how nice it looks with the vegetables in there, the, you know, the rice, the yellow rice and the carrots. And instead of peas, I used a little bit of asparagus because I had it. So now, you just put some into this ring, like that. And you push it down. A little less messy, I should have a smaller spoon. got a prettiness to it. So even when you're serving, look how nicely you can make it look. And then I love using my fresh herbs that I've got here. And I just pinch off a little thing like that and do it like that. So I want you to see that because you'll know how nicely you can make the plate look. As soon as the salmon's finished, and the asparagus, I'll lay out a complete plate like that so you can see it. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep this warm over on the other side. And I'm going to check our salmon because I do believe it's done. Put it over.
for here because I'm going to need that for my dessert. This is how you check salmon. Make sure your hands are clean. You don't cut into it. That would be bad. You just go like this. If it's a little bit soft, not too hard, it's pretty good. You don't want it too soft, right? The wind is blowing out my burner every once in a while. So I'm going to take it now. I've got a nice big lifter here. And I'm going to switch the asparagus and the salmon around. Okay. And as soon as the asparagus is done, then I'll bring the salmon out and you'll get to see exactly what it is. Whew. I keep getting smoked out. <laughs> so can anybody taste this by now? I smell like cedar plank salmon, but it is definitely going the right way. I'm just going to take my things to the side here. I'm going to get ready with the dessert. I'm going to get Jack to do another run for me. I'm going to show you what we do right now with the dessert because this is almost finished. If you're entertaining people and you, you want to make food, it should not be a chore. You shouldn't say, oh my gosh, do I have to run and get a pizza? You need to want to do it. And so you pre-prepare for it. Now salmon, it can be a little expensive, but it can be also within your budget. You can just go to the local stores and you get frozen salmon too and that makes it way less afford you know hard for you to uh, put in your budget okay now I'm going to bring the salmon out look at this now that is a cedar plank salmon the way it's supposed to be. Let it smolder, let your, your guests smell that. You see now, if you look at my asparagus, it's getting a nice grill mark on it. It's beautiful. The dessert is getting started. I'm going to put this back here. It's very easy to just take a piece of the salmon with a sharp knife. Just cut it like that. And you just cut it all into portions. These large ones like this, you're going to cut this way first, like this, because it's really fat and that way. But this one is ready, so I'm going to put that on the plate. And as a presentation, you put it like that. It's very pretty. I'm going to set this back in the barbecue to keep it warm, because I'm only plating the one plate to show you that. And the asparagus is ready. Jack, can I get you to come over here and put me some ice cream in, those, in one of those boats, please? Because we're gonna have a dessert ready to go in no time. Now this, is what your plate looks like when you're serving your cedar plank salmon. I can shut off my barbecue now because it's ready. I'm just going to use it as holding. Right? Look at that. And of course, you got to spice it up a little with the big with the big guns, like that. I just do it. Woohoo! And now I need the little bit of boost. Put the ice cream in there, Jack, please. And this is going just beautifully. Heating up the sugar. And a little bit of syrup in there. Oh, yeah. So it's a very sweet, but very good and delicious thing. See, it's just getting there. And then I'm going to add the 
Not for me, but <laughs> drink of the bananas. See, I'm going to put it in there. It's like that. Aha! Hola! And it's ready to go. But you have to cook off all the liquor, and you see it's a nice syrupy, syrupy thing. And you haven't really cooked the bananas so that they're smooshy or anything like that. Just beautiful. And it's done so quickly, like in minutes. And here's the ice cream. Then you just take your banana, a few pieces like that of the banana, and a little bit of the sauce. Voila! And a wee little bit of the garnish. Oh, and we need, we, min we need a mint leaf. But we're going to pretend. Just like that. Now there you've got a meal for your guests to die for. I want to thank you for uh, coming out, hanging out, having fun with me here again, for tuning in with Access and hanging out with me in Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. You know, I want you to remember to always love the life you live and just keep on keeping on. Until next time, I hope you enjoy the new recipes.